Okay, and here is SOL topic number two, characteristics of functions. Before we get started with the two examples in today's tutorial, let's take a look at some important vocabulary. Roots, solutions, x-intercepts, zeros. These are four words that mean the same thing. We're talking about the point or points where the graph crosses or touches the x-axis. We would like for these to be written as ordered pairs, so that will be a number, comma, zero for the x-intercepts. The y-intercept, this is the point where the graph crosses or touches the y-axis, and that ordered pair would be zero, comma, some number. The domain, this is the set of all possible x-values, otherwise known as inputs or the independent variable. We read our domain from left to right. Range. This is the set of all possible y values, or the outputs, or the dependent variable. And we read our range from down to up, the lowest value to the highest value. Increasing and decreasing intervals. Remember, we only use x values to describe these, and we read our graphs from left to right so that we can see where we are increasing and where we are decreasing. Asymptotes. These are invisible boundary lines that the graph will approach, but usually not touch or cross. If we have vertical asymptotes, those would be x equals a number. And if we have horizontal asymptotes, those will be y equals a number. The end behavior. This is where the ends of your graph are pointing. And we'll look at that in the second example. And finally, if you see this fancy function notation, f of x or g of x, these are just fancy names for y, and we can use y equals in our calculator or f of x or g of x. Speaking of calculators, if you do not have a picture of your graph, please get your calculator out, type the equation in, and look at your graph. So let's take a look at our first example we have that the graph of g of x equals the log of 2x has, and then we have a bunch of things about intercepts. Well, this would make sense if we're looking at a picture of the graph. So I'm going to call up my Desmos graphing calculator. If you do not have your Desmos calculator yet, please pause the tutorial and pull it up. Once you have this, we're simply going to type in the equation that we see. So I'm going to go right here and type in g of x equals, now I can go to the keypad and call up the log symbol, or since I have my keyboard, I can just type log, and then a parenthesis and put the 2x in there. So now I'm looking at this graph, mine's in green. I can see it curves like this over here. If I touch on the graph, I can see that there's a dot right here for the x-intercept. I see that it's 0.5 comma 0. So I know that there's an x-intercept. So I'm going to come back over here and say, since answer choice A says no x-intercept, well, there is an x-intercept. So I'm going to cross that out. I know that. Uh, answer choice says B, one x-intercept, sure. Uh, C says two x-intercepts. Well, no, there's only the one x-intercept. So bye-bye C. So now I know that it's going to be answer choice B or answer choice D. I need to know if there's no y-intercept or if there's one y-intercept. Let's look at that graph again. We're looking for a y-intercept. Well, there's a dot on the x-axis, and I'm looking for a dot on the y-axis. I don't see a dot on the y-axis. I can go all the way down and see. I, don't, I still don't see any sort of dots. You know what? I'm going to find a different way to do this. I'm going to hit the home screen and look at my graph again, and I'm going to call up a table. Let me show you how to do that. First, I need to click inside this so that I'm highlighting this uh, equation, and I'm going to go up to the settings here. And there's going to be a table option, convert to table. If I hit that table, I'm going to instantly get five values for x, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, and their corresponding g of x values. So I can see that I have some values when x is 1, and I have a value when x is 2. But when x is 0 or negative numbers, the function is undefined. And this is what's important right here. When x is 0, that would be my y-intercept. And it says the function is undefined, which means there is no y-intercept. 
And now you can explore this table some more. You can type in your own values. I remember that the x-intercept was at 0 0.5, so I'm going to type 0 0.5 to confirm that. Yep. So when x is 0.5, y is 0. So that's my x-intercept, but my y-intercept does not exist. So I know I can go over here and say that there is one x-intercept, but there is no y-intercept, and our answer choice is b. Let's take a look at our second example. Now, we already have the picture of a graph here, so we should not need a calculator. It says select the intervals where the graph is only increasing. So we're looking for increasing intervals, and it says all of the intervals. So there might be multiple answers in here. Before we actually answer this question, I'd like to go through a bunch of stuff that we can read about a graph. Let's start with the roots. Remember, roots are the same thing as x-intercepts. And I see three x-intercepts. Let's count them out. This is negative 2, 0, 0, 0, and positive 2, 0. I'm writing those as ordered pairs. Negative 2, 0, 0, 0, and positive 2, 0. So I have my x-intercepts. Let's talk about the y-intercept. The y-intercept is where we cross or touch the y-axis, and here it is. 0, 0, the origin. So 0, 0 is an x-intercept, and it's a y-intercept. Let's do domain. The domain we read from left to right. So all the way to the left of the x-axis is negative infinity, and all the way to the right of the x-axis is positive infinity. Let's see what this graph is doing. This arrow is pointing all the way to the left which means that our domain starts at negative infinity. And then we have all of this graph in the middle here, and then this arrow is pointing all the way to the right, to positive infinity, which means that the domain starts at negative infinity, has every number in between, and ends at positive infinity, or the set of all real numbers. Let's do the range. The range are the y values, so I'm looking up and down the y-axis. All the way down here is negative infinity on the y-axis. All the way up here is positive infinity. And I read from down to up, so let's see how low this graph goes. This arrow is pointing all the way down. I know that it's pointing all the way to the right for domain, but it's pointing all the way down for range. So our range starts at negative infinity. Let's see how high up this graph goes. It doesn't go as high as this. It goes even higher all the way up here, all the way pointing up to positive infinity. So the range here is also the set of all real numbers. Let's take a look at our increasing and decreasing intervals. Remember, we read our graph from left to right. So all the way over here to the left, the graph is decreasing. We're going downward. And then we turn, and then we go upward, increasing. And then we turn again, and we continue to decrease the rest of the way. So let's talk about the increasing. We're increasing right in here in the middle. And I'm just going to highlight this middle part right here. Okay, we are increasing from this point to this point, but we're talking about the x values. So we're increasing from this x value to this x value, and that's negative 1 to positive 1. So we put those in parentheses, and we have our increasing interval. Let's look at our decreasing intervals. That's everything else. We're decreasing on this side, and we're decreasing on this side. So let's highlight all this. We are decreasing over here. And over here, we decrease as well. So all of the red is increasing, and all of the orange is decreasing. So let's describe that. We are decreasing in all of this orange, which means we start all the way at negative infinity, and we decrease all the way till we get to that x value of negative 1. So negative infinity is where we start, and we stop decreasing at negative 1. And then we turned around and we increased a little bit right there in the red. And then we decrease more right here from positive 1 the rest of the way to positive infinity. So from 1 to positive infinity. And if we have multiple intervals, we link them together with a union symbol. Okay, now that we are at the end, let's talk about the end behavior. All end behavior will start like this. As x approaches negative infinity, comma, and as x approaches positive infinity, comma. All end behavior will do this. We're talking about the left side of the graph, and we're talking about the right side of the graph. 
what happens over there? Well, we have to look at the graph to do that. So let's talk about the left side of the graph. Over here on the left side of the graph, well, the arrow points up, which means that the y value points up to positive infinity. Let's look at the right side of the graph. Well, as x goes to positive infinity, the right side of the graph, the arrow points down, which means we're going all the way down to negative infinity. Y approaches negative infinity. Okay, now that we've done all of the characteristics of this graph, let's actually answer our question. We're talking about all the intervals where we are increasing. Well, that was just this one interval right here in the middle from negative one to positive one. So I'm gonna highlight this answer and that's the answer to our question. Thanks for watching this tutorial on characteristics of functions and enjoy doing the other practice problems in this packet. Thank you.